all side. Champions living right now. But the question is that which side of the house provide better solution to ensure the welfare of these neighbors who have been abused, right? I'm going to talk about two clashes in today's debate. Would their proposal solve the labor problem that occurring in those countries that abuse those labor uh, rights? And number two, I'm going to do a case analysis on the harm and benefits to the country that export products by China and the country that just import these products from China. Right? So that will be more. Let's go to the first clashes. Would their proposal then not by stopping importing salt? We see is this. Once you force this country to stop, like the exporting, the importing country to stop it, to stop importing these products from China, what well, we see is number one, the MNC would lose incentives because no, they are they are having they are supplying or selling less product to the countries that originally trade with them. It incentivizes this country right now to move up from China because they know way that they have to comply with, I mean, with those strict regulations to provide, for example, like minimum wage for all of these. Because you have to understand, the labor law is not determined by MNC. It's determined by the government itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. First, it is a form of incentive by the government to attract MNC to invest in China. This is why all the MNC comes to China instead of just building their factories in the United States. This is what forces, I mean, encourages them to come to China and build their factories or whatsoever and in order to provide jobs to local people, right? Right now, in their policy, we see that MNC right now will just move to other developing countries like South Africa, India. So at the end of the day, the impact is that people in China itself are going to have loss of, I mean, going to have less jobs because they depend on the MNC itself to provide jobs. Now we're going to even harm China itself, we're going to harm South uh, uh, India or even South Africa because yeah, yeah. they're going to just go to this country with less violated uh, labor laws. But number two, we say that different countries have different standards of labor law. Okay, Mike, you say that the United States of America, okay, uh, consider that receiving 10 U U USD per hour is not, is still considered uh, receiving minimum wage. Like com in comparison in China with a 2 billion population where people depended on jobs so much right. in order to sustain their life, we see that they, they should implement a different policy. Because why? Number one, pe the 2 billion people, 2 billion people dependent on jobs. Number two, we say that um, it says, like different standard of living. You can't compare like, US people in USD in China because right. the currency rate is different. Of course, like if you receive 1,000 RMB in China, it's considered very low wages for you in China. But if you compare it to people in China, when they have at least this kind of income, they are able to sustain their life. But number two is this. Why are the side of the house champion organic change? Because number one, we want to at least incentivize the growth of this MNC in China itself. Because in the long run, it's going to benefit the people yeah, here. Yeah. How? Because you have to understand the nature of business, like how MNC uh, operates. MNC, number one, they can prioritize on their growth instead of focusing on welfare and employment. You recognize that they should, they should prioritize, prioritize that, but the method comes back to another. Why? Because now MNC can use that money to invest in the form of like uh, projects or whatever they can, so that they can gain more profit. And this profit, at the end of the day, they can share with their employees, they can pay more than the employee. So it deals with the problems when, uh, where if they want to alert that this employee receive minimum wage or less payment. But number two is this. If we force this MNC company just to comply with this strict regulation, number one, the MNC company is not ready yet. Most of it, yes, they have MNC, they have billion, uh, billion uh, uh, ringgit uh, USD uh, or billion ringgit uh, corporation. But the point is this. Those money are in paper. They use those money in, in other projects like investment. It doesn't mean that they always have to prioritize this worker. But under I their they, yes, sit down, sit down. Uh, but under their proposal in the long term, what we see is this. If we force this MNC, they're gonna just leave, they're gonna have less job in China in, in China. So at the end of the day, people on the ground doesn't have a job to start with. So you have to be pragmatic in analyzing this issue. Okay, before that. Okay.
regarding investment and country hopping, first of all, if all the countries establish this law, wouldn't the, the demand itself is that MNCs, no matter where they go, they have to comply to it. Secondly, countries who want the investment of MNCs, wouldn't the government change the, the labour law so the MNCs can stay? Okay, I already mentioned earlier in my, in my speech that labour law determined by the government itself. Yeah, yeah. It's the government itself that track the MNC to come and invest in China. So you have to tell us then how, you, how is under your paradigm going to change the MNC itself, how they're going to treat the employees. Okay, and to uh, push the burden on us, you have the burden to discharge too. So let's look into the second issue, right? The harm and the benefits. So firstly, the benefits to the recipients country, like countries that import products. We see that this country they can at least get cheaper products from China. Because most of the time, countries the whole world they want to trade with China because China can produce cheap products. So it benefits on the recipient country by getting cheap products. But number two is this. We say that recipient country, they don't have a right to interfere with other countries' sovereignty, like China itself. Malaysia can't suddenly say that, okay, I want to trade with China just because China uh, paid a minimum wage to their employees. This doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, the yeah. priority of like, Malaysia itself is always to prioritize their citizens. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what we say that under their policy, it's going to harm the relationship between China. In the long run, China, if they're able to sustain themselves, China might stop trading with Malaysia and it's going to harm the recipient country itself. But let's look to the harm to the exporting country. We say that it reduces investment in China itself. That's why the MNC com company have to move out, right? So we see that if China itself had already been so dependent on MNC, because China itself is the second biggest economy in the world, we see that these MNC companies pay taxes to Chinese government, and this is where it helps to sustain the economy in China. With China going away of more than uh, seven percent a year, it's really going to harm China in the long run if you're not going to let this MNC to at least, I mean, uh, build their factories in China itself. So we say that it harms the exporters' country for the first place. But the benefit to China itself also is this: most of this MNC company that comes into China. They bring together their technology, that's what second speaker talked about. They bring together with their talent, and this helps develop the manpower in China. So this is one of the benefits that Chinese people, uh, which are uh, more than, uh, at least have 2 billion people, they're going to at least benefit from this policy, where their integration is in work, they can have, um, bring in more ideas or whatsoever. So Madam Chia, I told you two issues today. Their proposal actually not going to solve the problem of labor issues. Number two, the harm and benefits to the export, it brings clear outside. 